Now I got you. All right, here we are at the Vatican. I'm Chris Cuomo, and here is the President of the United States. I'm here with uh, Delia Gallagher, who is saying nobody uh, has this show of force when they show up, even at the Vatican, as the United States President. We just saw President Biden coming in in his vehicle known as the Beast. Uh, there are two of them. So let me introduce who we're here with now for this big occasion. CNN Chief White House Correspondent Caitlin Collins, CNN Vatican Correspondent, as I mentioned, Delia Gallagher, and we have CNN uh, Religion Expert, better okay. be, he's a priest, Father Dave Dwyer, host of Sirius XM's The Busted Halo Show, and CNN Religion Commentator, Father Edward Beck. I uh, couldn't ask for better. So uh, this is a big show here in the Eternal City. It's still going on. Uh, probably, I don't know, Delia, what do you think? Two dozen uh, vehicles here. Let's first get an idea of what this moment means in the Eternal City, and then we'll talk about the politics of it. Delia? All right, look, so what we're seeing now is the motorcade going through uh, the Arch of the Bells. He's got to go right into the Vatican up to the courtyard, which we will also see um, that first greeting. And then, unfortunately, afterwards, uh, we won't have the live pictures, uh, but we'll get, I'll get you an idea of what he'll be doing, walking up to those imposing marble halls, going down to the Papal Library um, to meet Pope Francis. As we were saying, um, you know, I've seen for 20 years heads of state come to meet the Pope, but when the U.S. comes with all of their security, it's always a major show of force. And of course, once you get out, it's President Biden on his own there with Pope Francis, and that's always a really emotional meeting. What do we expect to see and not see? That's been a little bit of a point of contention. So the Vatican yesterday surprisingly decided we're not going to see the live broadcast of the meet and greet. We wouldn't see, obviously, the private meeting anyway. That's private behind closed doors. But usually we get to see him walking through the corridors uh, and shaking the, the Pope's hand. Uh, they've decided that, you know, it's COVID. They don't want to have too many people in there. They're not going to do the lives, but they are going to give us the uh, video afterwards. So we're going to just see the president get out of his car and meet uh, the regent of the papal household uh, who will take him inside. And once he goes inside, then they've told us we won't have the live pictures right away. We'll have the tape afterwards shortly. Uh, Caitlin Collins, uh, the, the first impression is, of course, the entrance. Literally dozens of vehicles here. Uh, interestingly, the president of the United States was one, in one of the first few. There have been like two dozen since. In terms of what this meeting meets for the White House, Caitlin, what are you hearing? Yeah, there are going to be a few more dozen of those. I think it's about 80 cars in this motorcade, Chris. But, of course, when it comes to the actual substance of this meeting, it is going to be deeply symbolic for this president. Of course, he is only the second U.S. Catholic president, and he is someone who is deeply religious and goes to Mass almost every <laughs> single Saturday at a church in Georgetown. And the president is someone who does know the Pope very well. He met Pope Francis several years ago. They've met several times before, and they have a, a very close relationship. And he has talked about conversations they had after his son Bo died and what that meant for him and how Pope Francis was in the United States in 2015 actually when that happened and uh, they talked about the moment that they had when they were seeing Pope Francis off at the airport in Philadelphia they talked about that and and President Biden has often said you know those moments meant more to him that he thinks the Pope can even can even realize of what that meant to him as he was dealing with that and grieving in the aftermath of losing his son but Chris what's different about this visit is that it does have a more formal tone to it because of course this is the first time that they have met since Biden has taken office. They spoke during the transition after he won the presidency in the election in November, but they have not actually met in person since then. And so it's not just going to be that personal meeting between the two of them, though certainly that is going to be a major aspect of it. But also the White House says that they have plans to discuss issues like climate change, immigration, of course, COVID-19 and the aftermath of the pandemic, as the Pope had talked has talked about the role that he believes nations have in the wake of the pandemic and the effect that that had worldwide. And so it is going to be a little bit of both when they do get behind closed doors. But of course, we are not going to see much of this meeting because of uh, how they've curtailed the press coverage of this, even though typically you would be able to see them going in to meet, talking, saying their greetings, saying their hellos, and then the press would obviously leave the room. We won't have that moment today, uh, of course, though, Chris. Uh, great insights. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Caitlin. Let me go to Father Edward Beck. You and I were here in Rome together uh, when then Bergoglio became Pope Francis. Uh, both men were unlikely choices for leadership, but now here they are. How can they help each other in this meeting, Father Beck? Well, it's interesting, I think, is they're both 
facing similar obstacles, Chris. There is this neoconservatism faction in the Roman Catholic Church, and we're seeing that politically here as well in the country. And in a sense, I see them as allies in that. Pope Francis has been critiqued by right-wing media, religious media here in this country. He's come back at them for that critique. We've seen a great division um, with the recent election in the country of those who are saying the election is not even legitimate. Some are saying the same thing about the papacy of Francis. They call for his resignation. So in some ways, they can bond on the fact that they've been both maligned by similar factions. And I think that that gives them a certain solidarity, um, aside from the fact that you, again, have a shepherd and a parishioner, a member of the flock meeting. So yes, it's heads of state, but, it, but it's also a pastoral visit, I think, because obviously the Pope President Biden has met the Pope before. I mean, it's like the fifth time he's met him. And so there's a, a certain connection between these two that I think we'll see played right. out. Right. I'm here in Rome with Delia Gallagher and Father Dwyer. Uh, you're going to come to the Eternal City. You want to make a show. Uh, it's very important for President Biden to put a new face on America for the allies. Uh, what does it mean to start by meeting with His Holiness? Well, you know, look, it's very important for the Pope as well. I mean, this is happening on the eve of the opening of the G20, of, of COP26. Those are both international meetings where uh, discussing issues that Pope Francis has really staked a large part of his pontificate on, and he needs U.S. leadership on those issues. So the more that this relationship between President Biden and the Pope can be a good one, there he is, he's meeting. Here's the President of the United that, States coming out, and he is meeting the regent, you The regent said? of the papal household, so he's in charge of the, the papal apartments. His name is Monsignor Sapienza. And he will greet them, and the, he greets also the gentilwomini, the gentlemen, the papal footmen. Uh, this is a standard Vatican protocol. He says hello to them, and then they will go inside the Apostolic Palace. Of course, the Pope doesn't live in the Apostolic Palace anymore. We talk about the papal apartments, but Francis yeah. has chosen not to live there. But he still greets heads of state there because that's where the papal library is. And that area is right on the square. You know, when you see the Pope come for the Angelus on a Sunday to his window, those are the papal apartments. Gotcha. That's where President Biden will be going now. So you can see on the president's face his excitement, obviously, there with his wife, Dr. Biden. Now, Father, uh, in terms of Francis's message, climate, why does it mean so much to a pope? And let's get past the irony that Joe Biden is here to talk climate and just showed up with 90 gasoline burning cars. <laughs> sure, um, but sure. in terms of what this means for the pope, Pope Francis sees it really in terms of our theology of creation and that God has given us this planet and this universe as gifts to us, given us one another as gifts to us, and we have the responsibility to be stewards of that. Pope Francis would see it almost as if someone lent you their precious uh, uh, Renoir and said, I'm going to be back in a little while and hang on to this, and then we use it to clean up the paint in the garage, that it is, it is ours to take care of, and we believe that, that that is theological. That comes from God. Mm. Go ahead, Delia. On a practical level, you know, when we talk about the Pope, we're talking about the Catholic Church. And at a grassroots level, the Catholic Church has hundreds of organizations throughout the world that are on the ground. And you want to talk about vaccines, you've got Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Charities, hospitals run by Catholic uh, personnel that are ready to implement any plans. You know, the Pope can talk about these things. They can implement these things, but he needs world leadership, U.S. leadership, and other governments to come together and organize the plan. So that's where I think the focus is for this meeting. Hey, Caitlin, there's no question uh, that there's great significance here personally for uh, the American president. But, you know, the G20, he didn't have to meet with the Pope first. Uh, even though he is in Rome, and this is obviously the seat of the Vatican, it is the eternal city. But what do you understand in terms of why it was important for this president to meet with the Pope right out of the box? I think it's not surprising, of course. This is something that is it's so personal to the president. And he is he's one of our most religious presidents um, openly that we have had in some time, of course. You know, every Saturday nearly he is going to mass at 5.30 p.m. in Georgetown. You see the president often. He talks about his religion in his presidential speeches a lot. He's talked about the pope a lot. He's quoted him before and talked about uh, his message that he has also said throughout the world. You know, this is a president who brought his rosary beads into the Situation Room 
during that bin Laden raid, of course, when President Obama was in office. And so it's kind of something that is part a uh, deep aspect of his presidency. And so I don't think it's surprising that he's starting his major second trip overseas with this visit. But something that you were y'all were just talking about made me think about comparing, you know, the relationship that this president has with with this pope compared to the last president. And often when you saw Pope Francis try to serve as kind of this moral <laughs> counterpart when Trump was in office, you know, talking about building walls and a lot of the policies that he had, such a different message that the Pope often took, of course, throughout the world. And lately, you've seen the Pope talking about nationalism, and you've seen the president also, President Biden, talking about that, talking about how he's called it this phony populism. And you've kind of, so you've seen this, you know, interwovenness in their in their messages when it comes to aspects like that. And I think um, it shows how symbolic not only this relationship is, but also how often they agree on some of these policy matters as well. Of course, obviously, from two very different perspectives from the Pope and from the president. And so it's not just on top of what the White House says is on the official agenda for this discussion. Obviously, it will also be a personal discussion that the two of them will likely have when they're behind closed doors as well. Mm. You know, Father Beck, often, you know, religion is a no-go zone in politics. If somebody says uh, that they are devout, that's it, we leave it at that. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know, Trump was using it uh, as a masquerade. He changed positions on what he thought was moral or immoral to help himself. Uh, that has never been what Biden is uh, or was. And it's an interesting turn of events here at a time, as you were mentioning earlier, of what orthodoxy means uh, to meet with the pope. I thought this was going to be something that both men wanted to have very outward, that every minute of it would be seen. And yet the Vatican has decided to keep a lot of it quiet, and we're going to have to hear uh, versions of it later on. What do you make of that move? Well, it's not unusual, Chris. Since coronavirus, nobody has been permitted with live feeds other than the Vatican press corps, and they've done all of this after the fact with some editing. So it's interesting that they said originally we would have the live feeds, and then they just pulled right. it back yesterday. So there's kind of conspiracy theories. Well, they didn't want to see him shaking Biden's hand live or something. I don't believe any of that. I think somebody said, why suddenly are we allowing this? Uh, you know, it's not American exceptionalism, is it? So no, let's do what we've always done. We don't have live feeds for it. We're not going to do it now. So I don't think there's anything more to it than that. And we will get a summary of what they say. We never get a transcript of what they say. There's only an interpreter in the room, and we'll get kind of high points, but we won't get a lot of the personal conversation that's rarely revealed unless the president or the pope wishes to do so, and they rarely do. You know, uh, I want to send it back to you guys, but just the one little taste of how special it is here. Of course, Father Edward is in that beautiful set. I remember it very well when they were building it. You look at Caitlin's shot here with that beautiful uh, picture of Rome and Vatican City behind her, where we are with St. Peter's. You know, Rome is such a special place, and for it to be uh, the meeting place of the G20, uh, this is a very important time in a very historical and beautiful place. And it means so much for both men that are meeting now. It'll be very important to see what they make of their moment, John and Brianna. Yeah, and such an important start to this president's trip here uh, to Europe. Thank you so much, Chris, for the wonderful coverage. Appreciate it. Cuomo joins us live from Rome, the third most powerful person in the world, Chris Cuomo, <laughs> in Rome this morning. <laughs> you know, John, you guys are talking about things that are obvious and what's going to be done about it. Uh, that is a theme that's going to carry into what's happening right here, right behind us here in Vatican City. You see St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, you see a gathering crowd of people because this was a big moment. Uh, the United States president made some show when he showed up here. There were dozens and dozens of vehicles. Interestingly, uh, the president and first lady were in one of the first ones. You know, their, their vehicles, they call them the beast, those huge Cadillacs or whatever they are. A couple of them came. The president came out obviously excited. Now, that's not the pope. Uh, that is the regent, the man who oversees uh, all of the uh, main buildings within the Vatican. There's, of course, a lot of pomp and circumstance here. So the first lady and the president met him and then met these uh, the signori, the men who are in high positions here at the Vatican. And then they go inside and they meet with El Papa. 
uh, Pope Francis. Now, interestingly, there had been a little bit of misdirection. We thought we were going to get to see this meeting, and that would have been unusual, right, because the Vatican, the Holy See, uh, despite its name, usually you don't get to see that much. But we thought this was going to be different. No, it's going to be as it usually is. You'll get some clips afterwards and uh, some kind of reckonings from both sides of what it meant. But it will mean a lot, and here's why. On a political level, and yes, you do have to talk, up, talk about the papacy in terms of politics, and this pope especially wants to have a political footprint, uh, these are men who are strained with their objectives. Uh, pope Francis has division within his ranks. Uh, Joe Biden, as president of the United States, we're seeing play out at home. The Democrats uh, divided ranks. Absolutely. It's not a good argument. It's not a robust debate. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, that they have, and he has to fix it because he's at the top of the party. And then they have what joins them both, not just being Catholic, uh, but concerns about the world, about uh, the extension of loving mercy and suffrage. And that's what I think you're going to hear coming out of this meeting, John uh, and Brianna, is uh, the Pope and the Vatican and the President and the White House talking about what brought them together and the universality of purpose in helping the human condition in climate and in poverty. Yeah, talking about kindness, talking about charity, which, you know, it's always important, and it's nice to see a focus on that. Chris Cuomo, stand by there. We will come back to you soon. Good morning to our viewers here in the United States, around the world, and in the metaverse. It is Friday, October 29th. I'm John Berman, alongside Brianna Keeler. Chris Cuomo is standing by in Rome because President Biden has just wrapped up a meeting with Pope Francis, America's second Catholic president, spent 90 minutes, 90 minutes, a very long time with the Pope. And in a matter of minutes here, the president is set to sit down with the president of Italy. So let's get right now to Chris Cuomo in Rome. Chris? All right, thank you very much. They absolutely had a meeting. It was a long meeting. Let's discuss how long, what that means. CNN Vatican correspondent Delia Gallagher here, of course, Father Dave Dwyer, host of Sirius XM's um, program about the, I got it wrong before. Busted halo. Busted halo. I said broken halo. <laughs> it's busted halo. Huge difference. CNN Chief White House correspondent Caitlin Collins uh, also here. So, Caitlin, I'm going to come to you, but I want to get perspective about how long this meeting was uh, from Delia, they say 90 minutes, a little bit less. It was like 70, 75 minutes. But in terms of the context of how long these meetings generally go and what it says to you about the depth, Yes, so we'll get the exact timings uh, once we get the statement uh, because we've got a couple of 90 minutes, even uh, anyway, over an hour. Um, but definitely the one of the longest meetings for this Pope. I mean, if we want to compare it to President Obama, uh, he met with him for about 50 minutes, which was considered quite long. Uh, President Trump, about 30 minutes. Um, and we're talking about the one on one private talk outside of meeting the entourage and everything. So that is a very long time. And uh, I think we can infer a number of things from that, but it was probably a very good and deep conversation covering all of those things that we've been talking yeah. about, not just the issues, but probably that personal pastoral, how are you doing, how is it going, uh, that's so typical of Pope Francis. That's what it suggests to me, that, that length of time. Because remember, he's going down now, or he has gone down now, to, to speak with the Secretary of State and the, and the Vatican's foreign minister, and that's where they hash out the geopolitical stuff and the, and the nitty-gritty. Um, so the Pope meeting suggests to me that it was very personal pastoral. Fair, fair to assume that it was something like a pastor and a congregant having some some part of the time together. Because you're right, now comes the real nitty gritty. He'll meet with the Secretary of State and the Foreign Minister. Yeah, you know, Caitlin, it makes sense. I'm certainly it does to you because of of course there had been this talk beforehand. Well, this is the Pope and this is the President, and you know this is going to be very formal. And but it didn't never made sense. That's not the kind of man Bergoglio, Pope Francis is, and it's not the kind of man that Joe Biden is. As you well know, if there's anybody who's going to want to sit around and talk and get personal, it's Joe Biden. 
Yeah, this is a president who is known for meetings that happen with lawmakers or others, leaders at the White House that often stretch well past the time that they are designated for. And the White House knew this could potentially be a meeting that did go longer than they had initially expected. So there was a little bit of extra time in the schedule for that. They are now in this expanded meeting. And we know formally what the White House said was on the agenda for this meeting, immigration, climate change, and of course the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so one thing it will be interesting to see if they discussed this and what the conversation, what kind of tone it took and what direction it went in was talking about sharing COVID-19 vaccines, because that has been something that, of course, the White House has been pressed on by multiple world leaders in order to share more vaccines with other countries, third world countries that do not have the supply, of course, that we have in the United States, where there are there are plenty of vaccines to go around, excess vaccine. And so that was something that the Pope has made really important and prioritized over the last several months, is talking about vaccine sharing from wealthy nations with other nations. And so in, in addition to obviously the personal relationship that the two have, a very warm relationship, it will be interesting to see what it how, what happened and what they talked about when it came to concrete measures like that. Absolutely. And that, a lot of that's going on right now, as Delia was just saying, you have your expanded thing at the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, uh, in there talking about what policy rationales there are. But I wonder if Joe Biden uh, will be susceptible after this meeting to talk about what it meant to him as a man and as a Catholic to, you know, have really the, you know, the ultimate pastor. Yeah. if you're a Catholic, the Pope, talking to him about his situation. Okay, well, look, I imagine that he will make some statements about the meeting because what happens after these meetings is, of course, the Vatican <laughs> sends out, you know, three or four lines. It's all very sparsely worded and very carefully worded. And then maybe down the line, if we're on a plane trip with the Pope, we can ask him about the meeting. Right, but right, otherwise, right, we right. don't get the Pope's impression of the meeting. So really, the only information that you have is going to be from uh, President Biden if he decides to, to talk about it, about exactly what went on there. Because there's, the there's only one person in the room that entire time, close to an hour, 15, hour and 20 minutes, and that person is sworn to secrecy. Well, right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you get the translator to talk. That would be good. But that's so you, we assume that the Pope spoke in Italian and it was translated into English? Or what do you, or yeah, he spoke or English? Or Spanish? Yeah, he might have done it in Spanish. It's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, Caitlin, in terms of what they wanted to do with this meeting, do you have any expectation of what the White House is hoping uh, that this is a springboard for? Well, they were really describing it as not this formal meeting. Obviously, it is more formal than it has been in the past when the two of them have met and when, the pre when President Biden has met with other popes uh, because, of course, he, they are now both heads of state. This is the first time since taking office. But I do want to talk about the length of this meeting because right now what the White House is saying is that it was about 90 minutes. And obviously, that is a very long meeting. And if you just look at the context of what other meetings Biden has had with previous popes, when he met with uh, John Paul II back in the 80s, uh, he often talks about how the meeting went on for so long that they had aides from uh, the Pope's aides coming in and knocking on the door trying to kind of wrap that conversation up several <laughs> times because they were speaking for so long. That was a meeting that only lasted 45 minutes. So you can compare the, the scale with how long this meeting went compared to that one. And that was a meeting that Biden described at the time as being a very long uh, time to have an audience with the Pope. And of course, this is nearly double that based on what the White House is saying. You know, the two men are similar in that regard. Quick little thing, and I got to give it back. Actually, I'll tell this to Brianna. Caitlin, thank you very much. Delia, Father Dwyer. Um, Brianna, I'm interviewing Biden during the campaign, and we're in Iowa. And at first, the staffers are like, you know, you know, you get the whole thing. Like, they look at you about, like, that's time. You got to stop. Uh -huh. You know, you got to stop. And your <laughs> producer's saying it. And then Jill Biden <laughs> comes and leans in. She's like, we have to go. We have to go to this baseball field right now, Joe, we have to go. So, you know, once he gets talking about something he wants to, I'm sure both these men had to be stopped today. Yeah, that was actually a very funny moment. Uh, I recall it very well. Chris, uh, thank you so much. Of course, we're going to be checking back in with you. We appreciate all of the coverage from Rome on this very important visit of the presidents there. Let all right, history being made here at the G20. President Biden having his big meet with the Pope. Uh, we have some footage for you of people leaving the meeting. Very long. We'll discuss what that means. First, I uh, hear we have Jill Biden, the first lady, uh, saying goodbye as she prepares to exit. Where's the president? He's still in there. Why? Because after you meet with the Pope, you meet with the extended leadership there and have uh, more policy type discussions. Now, there goes Il Papa in the fiat. 
And Delia Gallagher is with me. Boy, you talk about different images. Yeah. Uh, the most powerful man in Catholicism leaves in that little tiny car. Yeah. And Joe Biden shows up about 80 cars deep in one of the biggest Cadillacs that yeah, they call always, the beast. It's always a big show, of course, with the U.S. and their security. And, of course, Pope Francis, you know, he always travels in the smallest car possible, a little tiny Fiat. So he leaves there because, of course, he doesn't live there anymore. He has to go back to his house. It's lunchtime now. So he's probably going back to have a little bit of lunch because he's got a full day, too. Um, so the president is still inside with the Vatican secretary of state, the Vatican foreign minister, uh, talking about some of the more, as you said, uh, policy issues. But the interesting thing is how long the meeting with the pope lasted. Um, you know, we're hearing from 90 minutes to the Vatican saying an hour and a quarter, basically. I mean, you've got to consider you've got the face-to-face -face closed door, and that's what we're talking about. Then you've got the extended meeting where he meets the first lady, he meets the entourage as an exchange of gifts. But that face-to-face -face lasted a long time. What was the gifts? Gifts. So the Pope gave um, the president a ceramic tile with um, a pilgrim on it pointing to St. Peter's. An oh. etched tile. Wait, what are we watching now, right now? Oh, okay, so here's okay, some there's video some, there's some images. of them together. Now, remember, we didn't see this live broadcast, so obviously the Vatican has just given us these images of the two greeting and sitting down. You can hear the cameras clicking in the background. This is just the, the first few minutes before they start their formal talks, obviously. And you've got a translator there. And there we go, some of the formal pictures with the First Lady and President Biden. He also gets to meet other members of the entourage. There we go. And that's always a big moment for, for members of the entourage, usually, to have a moment to meet the Pope. We saw the Secretary of State there, the security advisor, uh, Tony Blinken, Jake Sullivan. So they've given us they've given us a good a good bit of this. Now normally there would be journalists in there. We have pool of Vatican journalists, White House journalists that could go in there, but the Vatican hasn't allowed that since COVID. Now, in your uh, understanding of Francis, uh, they say his face uh, he, he, his face always tells you how he feels. Well, you look, we parse the face so much, but you know what, Chris? When he's meeting heads of state and he does those official pictures, he usually has quite a dour expression. I don't want to read too much into he that here. Dour he's here. very happy, obviously, but he's <laughs> meeting people. I'm talking about the, when he does the official pictures, you know, we've always looked at those and said, well, he's not looking happy. He's never, but certainly here, you know, but he's meeting people, so you'd expect him to, to smile. I mean, that's also interesting, even though during COVID, shaking hands with everybody. Shaking hands, yeah, well, he's vaccinated now. He wasn't, you know, there was an issue a while back because he didn't want to wear a mask, Pope. He was doing audiences without no, a mask. right in in America. But now, he's, but now, uh, you know, he, he's, he's vaccinated. The word is he got his booster shot. There's the gift. There's uh, the Bidens gave that to the Pope. What that, was that? That's a vestment. Um, it's a handwoven investment from the 1930s uh, that came from a church in Washington, D.C., Holy Trinity Church, where uh, it was founded in the 1700s, very involved in um, abolition of slavery. Uh, Abraham Lincoln visited that church. John Kennedy worshipped at that church. So um, that has a lot of significance. This is the ceramic tile I was telling you about, if you can see that with the etching. And um, that was the Pope's gift to uh, President Biden, along with, he traditionally gives him um, any head of state, uh, a number of his writings, right? So his encyclicals and uh, and his last document on human fraternity. The significance of what the first lady is wearing on her head? So that's the black mantilla. That's a veil, which is traditional. Uh, you don't have to wear it, but when you meet the Pope, generally the uh, protocol is black. So black suits for men, or at least a dark suit, let's say. And women uh, will generally wear a, a skirt and a, a veil, but, you know, not, not necessarily. Only Catholic queens can wear white to meet the Pope. And when they're speaking with him, there's a translator right there. Yes. Uh, the Pope understands the English, Pope but understands. it's not a language of the facility The Pope understands. For him. You can see the translator right there. Um, he understands English, and he can express himself in, in small talk in English. As we know, they've met before, so there's obviously already a bit of a rapport there. And this is the official picture. So, so these are the gifts from the Pope for the entourage. He usually gives them a medal, um, a small medal or a rosary, indeed. And there we go again with some of the gifts from, that's a big vestment. That's a, that's a really nice uh, gift, I think, for, for Pope Francis, that embroidered vestment. 
used by the Society of Jesus in the U.S. You can also listen into a little bit of the small talk. Uh, what did he say? Uh, Joe Biden, the president, said. Command coin. Oh, okay. That he gives to warriors and leaders. And uh, you are the most significant warrior for peace I've ever met. And with your permission, I'd like to be able to give you a coin. It has the U.S. seal on the front. What's different with this coin? Usually, but I know my son would want me to give this to you because on the back of it, I have the state of Delaware, the 261st unit my son served with. Figlio sarebbe contento che gli do questo perché non c'è la casa bianca ma dello Stato no, di Delaware. Is, e la tradizione è I'm only kidding about this. E scherzo. If next time I see you, you don't volta, have it. Se lei non la vede, you have to buy the drinks. Allora lei deve offrirmi da bere. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm the oh, only boy. Irishman you've ever met who's yes. never had a drink. Ma io sono l'unico irlandese che lei conosce che non ha mai bevuto in vita sua. Ma che l'irlandese? Hanno portato il whisky. I know that. <laughs> that was really interesting. Uh, let's see if they say anything else, and then I'll explain that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. It was a famous. African-American baseball player in America. I know. I know. Afro-Americano, Afro-Americano. And he didn't get to play in the Major League Baseball until he was 45 years old because he was black. Non gli hanno permesso di giocare nella Lega Principale fino a che aveva 45 anni perché era nero. He was a pitcher. E lui era un battitore, quello che batteva. And usually pitchers lose their arm when they're 35. In genere loro non guardano come già. He pitched to win on his 47th birthday. E invece... The press walked in the locker room and said his name was Satchel Page. Si chiamava Satchel Page. Allora gli giornalisti sono andati nello spogliatoio. The commanding officer said, Satch, no one's ever pitched to win at age 47. How do you feel about pitching to win on your birthday? E tutti hanno detto, nessuno ci è mai riuscito a fare questo a 47 anni. Come ti senti averlo fatto il giorno del tuo compleanno? And he looked at me and said, boys, that's not how I look at age. I'm sorry, what is it? Boys, Bo that's not how I look at age. <laughs> Dice, ragazzi, non si guarda all'età. <laughs> I look at it this way. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Quanto vecchio saresti se tu non sapessi quanto vecchio sei? You're 65, I'm 60. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grazie, signora. Boy, oh boy. Well, there you go. I'll tell you what, my guess is you just saw two moments between a president and a pope that you have never seen before and you will never see again. The first one, uh, it's a big military tradition, okay. uh, but presidents also. They have coins that are called command coins. And with the military, it's a sign of regard. Uh, and uh, commanders have it. The commander in chief has one. I've never heard of him giving it, you know, who he gives it to, who he doesn't. He just gave it to the Pope. And he even said that uh, it's significant to him first, heartbreaking. Uh, his son served in the 261. And that's on the back of uh, the coin with the state of Delaware. And that obviously matters to the president. And uh, the pontiff had consoled him when his son, Bo, passed. So he gives it to him. And then, Delia, he tells him, I can't believe he said this to the pope. He says, the deal is, the next time I see you, if you don't have this coin, the drinks are on you. <laughs> and the Pope responded through his translator, yeah, I'm okay with that. And Biden said, remember, I'm an Irishman, so the drinks matter to me. First of all, the casualness of all that is obviously, I'm sure, notable to you. Then he tells him a story about this famous pitcher from what was then called the Negro Leagues, Satchel Page, phenomenal athlete, wasn't allowed to play because he was black, didn't get into the league until his late 40s, and then pitched a win. And someone said to him, 
um, you know, wow, 47, and you pitched your win. You must feel amazing. And he said, I don't see age that way. The way I see it is you are as old as you would think you were if you didn't know how old you are. And he told that story to the Pope, and he said, you're 65. I'm 60. <laughs> and for him to share those kinds of moments. Well, that was great. I mean, look, that uh, to me kind of encapsules uh, the rapport between these two because uh, Joe Biden obviously feels comfortable enough to speak to the Pope in that way and tell those jokes. Why? Because the Pope does the same thing. The Pope is very personable like that. He loves the stories. He goes on and on and on. And that's why now I understand why the meeting took so long. <laughs> they were probably sharing jokes back and forth and sharing stories at, but that were meaningful. You know, it's not it's not a flippant thing. I mean, those are meaningful. For a Pope to tolerate that, the next time I see you, drinks are on you, and to think that's funny. Oh, no. He have you ever heard of that before? He, he Listen, I have seen it time and time again. I mean, this is the man from the streets <laughs> of Buenos Aires. He loves the people. You know, he loves the, the personal stories like that. That is the kind of thing that works with him very, very well. And you can see that the president uh, picked up on that, and, and, and that's probably the president's personality as well. But you can see that easy rapport there. Boy, you know, and I'll tell you what, it'll seem trivial on, on one level. They got all these important things to talk about. Let's not forget how human beings work, okay? Uh, the practical, the political always follows the personal. Mm -hmm. If you trust, if there's amity, if there's a sense of friendship, things can be achieved. And it really sure. gives you a little bit of insight into the connection between the men. Yes. And you can only imagine how purposeful the rest of the conversation was. And of course, we'll learn as they want us to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, the White House will tell us more uh, than the Pontiff. Delia Gallagher, I couldn't sit next to somebody who knows more and is better for the audience than you. Thank a you. pleasure, a pleasure. All right, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, you just saw some history. We're living it together. Stay with CNN.